This is Nuts and Bolts. I'm Lon Schiffbauer. When I was a kid, I wanted to be an oceanographer. There was nothing else on my radar. I saw a documentary with Jacques Cousteau as a little boy, and I decided, wow, that's it. That's what I'm going to be. Well, needless to say, it didn't turn out that way. And there's always a little part of me that kind of regrets that, right? Don't worry, I've gotten over it. But my guest today, she too knew early on what she wanted to do. And yet, even though there were some hiccups along the way and some, you know, repositioning of goals and priorities for her, she has been able to return to her first love and really start building a career. And so with that, let's meet her. So why don't we start off by having you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Jade Gottfriedson. I am an actor, a singer, performer. I got my start in musical theater as a young kid, and I've taken some breaks here and there. <laughs> and now I'm back in it and actually doing it professionally. And it's amazing. I love it. Why? I mean, it's the height of vulnerability. Why do you do that? It's the way I feel inside when I do it. I mean, yeah, it's terrifying and my anxiety levels skyrocket almost every time. <laughs> but at the same time, like when I finish doing a performance or even an audition, I, I consider each audition a performance, actually. When I finish each performance, I just feel like I can't really explain it. I feel deeply. I feel more connected. I feel more rooted and grounded in myself because I learn more about myself with each experience. And I love the way I make people feel like I can help people. I don't make them feel anything, but I can help them feel things that they haven't felt for a long time or help them see or face things that they know they're dealing with or that they maybe have been hiding from. And like the arts are just a way for people to see things in a new way and to feel things in a new way. It allows people to connect on a deeper emotional level. You know, you make me think of, I'm a big fan of storytelling. Um, as a communicator, I understand the power of storytelling. When we sat around fires as cavemen, we weren't sharing Excel spreadsheets. We were telling stories. <laughs> and one of the things that I've heard many times, although I've not seen the research explicitly, is that stories allow us to almost have an experience without going through the actual experience. That there are parts of the brain, and again, I'm not citing research, here, but there are parts of the brain that are triggered by both actual experience as well as hearing a story. And it creates a stronger sense of empathy and, and connection between people. Have you witnessed this? Would you agree with that? What's your take? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I think that's the reason why I love it so much is because um, my acting coach will say that we're real people in imaginary circumstances. And it's so true. Like we're taking these imaginary people, these imaginary names, these imaginary situations, but they're based on real life most of the time, you know? And so we're able to be like ourselves, bring that human element into these, you know, made up situations, but it helps people relate because I mean, they're like, oh yeah, I've seen something like that before. Or I've done something similar to that before. And we just have this deeper connection that happens. You mentioned that you started when you were young and then your life kind of took you this direction, that direction. Let's face it, life is a meandering river. Sounds like you've gotten back into this. I don't want to say fairly recently, but, you know, in the last few years, if that's correct. Yeah. What role has goal setting played as you kind of brought yourself back into the industry and worked on building a career in this area? I think it's just, I, I guess my desire to perform has just always been there ever since I was a little kid. Like I, I went on stage and I loved it. I loved how I felt. I loved how people responded. And I was like, yeah, this is my thing. I love it. So I guess what brought me back to it is that when I was a kid, I had these, I guess we can call them goals. Um, I could see myself, you know, on the Disney channel or doing such and such movie. There, there are these movies and these um, stage musicals that I really loved. And I just thought to myself, 
I want to do that. Like that's going to be me someday. And so I think that's the starting of a goal. And since that desire has kept with me, like that I've just been so attached to that since I was younger, I'd say maybe since I was 15, at least that's when I really started to say, I want to do this. I think that desire has always been there. Um, Other desires and goals have become more important. And so that's why they have happened faster. But now the timing just seems right. And it's like, okay, yeah, I can do this. I can live my 15 year old dream now. It's not too late. I can do it. How do you go about setting specific goals for each year or each season? Or do you set specific goals? Oh, yeah, I definitely do. And I think my um, the agent that I used to have, she really helped me with this. She's like, okay, what are your goals in the industry? Like, as we were talking, seeing if I would be a good fit um, as one of her talent, she's like, hey, what do you want to do? How can I help you? And that really helped me get started in thinking, oh, I need to have goals. Like, if she's going to help me, she needs to know where I want to go. And then we can work together on that. So having a clear vision of what I want also allows other people to help me get there. If I don't really know what I want to do, then I'm kind of just like floating around like, oh yeah, this is fun. Great. But I'm not really seeing a lot of progress if I do that. So yeah, I accomplished all three of the goals that I had last year, which was amazing. And I do, um, I do think I owe that to my talent agent. She was just really encouraging. And she's like, yeah, you did it. What's next? What are you going to do next? Um, And now I have a manager and she's the same way. She's like, okay, what do you want to do? And sometimes she's like, okay, remind me about this. Like, I see that you're doing this, but what is it that you're wanting out of it? Or what, what projects are you wanting to do now? And she really helps me to kind of just stay on a more, a more aligned path and not like waste my time or resources on things that aren't going to help me get there. Do goals from your managers and so forth, or goals that you set with your managers, do they kind of create a sense of accountability that this person is watching me, this person is investing their time and effort into my career, I'm accountable to that person to make progress on these goals? Yeah, definitely. I think that helps me a lot to have someone who I'm accountable to. They can help remind me of things too. And and it just helps to have them on my side. They're like, hey, I saw this casting. Hurry and apply for it. I know that this is what you want to do. This is going to get you there. So it sounds like you have um, you have both a, a large picture as well as kind of annual goals that you set with with your stakeholders and folks who to whom you feel a sense of accountability. What what aspect of goal setting still eludes you? What do you struggle with? What do you think, gosh, if I could just do this better, I'd be so much more effective? Sometimes I have a hard time making like a specific plan. <laughs> I know that when you set a goal, you're supposed to like have a plan to get there. And sometimes I'm like, eh, I'm just going to throw my goal out there and I'm going to get there. But it doesn't quite work that way. Like we need to have more of a specific plan on how we're going to get there. Um, we need to have like the steps that we're going to take. Okay. If I want to go here, what's the next thing that I'm going to do? And you need to have a list of like actionable items that you can do like right now. So yeah, I want to get this spokesperson um, commercial gig with this specific company for this specific product. I want to do that someday. Great. What can I do now? Because I'm not in charge of casting. I don't make that decision that's out of my control. So what can I do now that will get me ready for that? You reached your goals last year. What mm-hmm. are your goals this year? Um, one of them I just posted on Instagram a while ago, and it's kind of silly. <laughs> but um, one of my goals is to be in a production where I have a speaking role, has a high enough budget to afford a hair and makeup artist to do my hair and makeup. <laughs> and I know that, that sounds really silly. <laughs> Maybe it sounds vain, whatever, but um, most of the projects that I do, I do a lot of lower budget projects, which is fine. I mean, I love it. I get the experience. It's helping me get towards some other goals that I have, but I would really like to have my hair and makeup done. And for me, that shows that I am getting a step up in the industry. It shows that I am getting better. And I don't know there's just a lot of things that are associated with it in my mind. So that's one of my goals. I don't think this is silly at all. So let me toss out there why I think that this is a really, truly career-specific goal and see if I'm just smoking dope or what, right? (laughs) Okay. 
So getting your hair and makeup done by a professional for a production shows investment in you. Yes. And that is an outward manifestation of the perception of value that they have for you, right? They would not invest in your hair and makeup if it were not for the fact that you were bringing specific and desirable value to the production. That's true. There's something about um, that last step that really gets you into character. And, you know, hair and makeup artists have a vision and it's so Cool. I don't know if you've ever sat down and talked to a wardrobe specialist or hair and makeup artist and why they're doing what they do for this for the different looks, whether it's a Hallmark film or a horror film or whatever, like you would think the hair and makeup is not a big deal, but it is so huge. Like it brings a lot to the character and what the character is is doing in their character arc and their in their character development. And it's very fascinating to me. Like, I want to up my game enough so that they can help me up my game. When you are pursuing a part or lead or whatever, right? Let's look at at two extremes. And you tell me where the dial often ends up on this extreme, right? One extreme is I have been pursuing this part for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And I've been networking and I've been talking to people and I've been sending my reel and I've been, you know, doing all kinds of things, photobombing the events. The other extreme is I got a flipping phone call last Tuesday and now I'm in the makeup chair. Where does it often end up when it comes to the parts that you play? You know, I feel like I'm I'm on the extreme of I've been working at this for a year and a half. I'm doing this. I'm doing everything that I can. And then all of a sudden the other one comes. (laughs) Does that make sense? It's like I work my tail off doing all these things, all these things. And then all of a sudden the phone call comes for maybe a different goal. <laughs> you know, it's, I, I told my, I guess you can call her my niece. The other day she was saying that she wants to get into acting. Okay. She's only 13. And so I was helping her apply for this audition that just came out and I was teaching her how to do it and how to read the directions and make sure that you're really thorough and following the directions because if you don't, then you're automatically cut. So I was teaching her to follow the directions and I'm like, okay, hey, each of these submissions It wasn't even an audition. She didn't have to send in the video. But each of these submissions is like putting money in the bank. You know, like you have this huge savings account for acting and for the things that you're doing. Okay. You have like your overarching goal of this is how much money I want to make, or this is what I, what I want to have here in my bank. But each time you're doing even just a submission, like putting your name out there and sending your headshot and resume, that's putting money in the bank. They see your name. They see your picture. They see what you've done. Pretty soon you'll put so much money in that bank. Then they feel like they know you because they've seen you so many times. So they're like, oh, wait a second, Jane Gofferson. Like, I want her for this part. Like, she's, she's great. I tell my students, I say, listen, when people are hiring, they're not, for the most part, hiring strangers, right? Their first go-to is, who do I know who's with me right now? Mm -hmm. I'll hire them. Their next go-to is, who do I know who's interested in the job, who's external, but I know them, I've worked with them in past jobs. That's the next go-to. After that, it's asking coworkers, who do you know? Who do you know? Mm -hmm. It's a long way down the list before they start bringing in absolute strangers that they've never heard of and Mm -hmm. are sight unseen. Yeah, I don't really want the general public to think that, but I want (laughs) casting directors. You want casting directors. Producers to think that. That's right. You still want to be able to go out and shop and be a schmuck without, you know, having to worry about it. Wear my sweats and not do my hair without people. That's right. Well, Jade, thank you so much for joining me. I really enjoy having people from different backgrounds and in different industries kind of talk about goals because, you know, all right, not everybody's out there trying to start a business or run a marathon. Some folks are trying to build careers in some pretty fascinating places. And you're definitely one of those. Well, thank you. I, I enjoyed coming here and talking with you. So thanks so much for having me. This is really good. I want us to pause for a moment and think about some of the lessons that we learned from Jade. No matter what happens in your life, you can be flexible. Yes, you might have to take a break from your goal. Yes, you might have to reallocate your resources to other things, but you can always hold on to that vision and there's nothing to stop you from achieving your goal. All right, 
Thank you for joining me today. If you found this interesting, do me a favor, share it with your friends and family and coworkers. They've got goals too. Give them a hand. All right, until we talk again, have a fantastic day.